Hello my friends, I want to show you something that I've seen that really allows you to see why the punishment of God is about to come over this earth. And you have to look at America to understand this and why America has been marked by these signs in the heavens. Um, why the eclipse, for instance, is coming on the 8th. Why we're marked as an adulterer like a scarlet beast. You have to understand that America was the last stronghold in the world where the gospel could go and be accepted, where it could receive rest. It went from here to there to there to here, all over the world, where it would be accepted for a while and then ultimately kicked out. And it's exactly like Jesus spoke to the disciples, go into a house, and if they accept you, go in and sup with them. If they don't accept you, wipe the dust off your feet and move on to the next location. America was that last place where the gospel was to be accepted into the world, where it could receive rest, where it could be fruitful and multiply. It was America. And when America decided to turn its back on that gospel, that is what has brought about these days that we live in. The gospel not accepted in the school, the gospel not accepted in the courthouse, it's not accepted um, in the government, it's not even accepted in church anymore in most places. The stronghold, the strong man, has been tied up. Now, I speak a lot of the dispensationalist Zionists, and I have seen and known for a long time now that they are a stained virgin because they don't really believe on the blood of Christ. They believe on the blood of Christ plus the works of their own hands. And this is what I'll be able to illustrate now as I've seen it in a different light. Go to all the way back to Genesis and go to Cain and Abel. According to Genesis, Abel, a shepherd, offered the Lord the firstborn of his flock. The Lord respected Abel's sacrifice, but did not respect that offered by Cain. In a jealous rage, Cain murdered Abel. Cain then became a fugitive because his brother's innocent blood put a curse on him. Now, dispensationalism, Zionists, that whole Protestant movement, the one that's all over YouTube, the one that says wonderful things that your ears want to hear, but then whenever you listen to the core of their doctrine, they replace the blood of Jesus by saying that believe upon the Lord and be saved, but if you call yourself a Jew and live in Israel, you have the blood of Abraham, God's going to come back and save you anyway. All the church is here for is, is for God's chosen people, so that when they're removed, God's going to be able to go back to them and they're going to be able to be saved. All the church is for is just like a placeholder. She isn't special. And we know that God doesn't operate like this. He doesn't work in partiality. And we know that the Jews, those who call themselves Jews, remain cursed unto this very day because they rejected the blood of Jesus Christ, which was the offering made by Abel. That is the only offering that God accepts, is the blood of Abel, the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. Any other way is a different offering. Now you have these red heifers over there in Israel, and it's very important that they came from Texas because it shows... Who sent them there? Who is responsible for what you see happening right now? That they're getting ready to sacrifice a red heifer. That they've already built an altar. And they're being praised by those who call themselves Christians. Because that means that the great tribulation is coming. We're getting out of here and then God's going to go back and rescue and save the Jews. And, and they're going to bath in, in the ashes of these red heifers and they're going to offer the blood to God and God's going to accept it and he's going to come back and save them because they're going to make themselves ritually clean because of this red heifer. They literally say these things while at the same time saying that they're Christian and they believe in the blood of Christ. Uh, it doesn't even make sense to me. It's so double-minded. It's so full of hypocrisy that I can't even fathom how they cannot see it. And then I realize that it's because God has done it to them. God has hardened them to being able to see what they're saying. They say that the blood of Christ is the offering and the way to God, but then they say that the ashes of the red heifer are going to make their priests ceremonially clean. How can they not see what they're saying? But they can't because God has done this to them. He has made this happen. And why? 
because they are the ones who have put this in position to occur. Go all the way back, while dispensationalism had considerate influence through the Schofield Reference Bible, Christian lobbying for the restoration of the Jews preceded the publication of the Schofield Reference Bible by over a century, meaning for hundreds of years, where the gospel had its stronghold in America was a yeast that kept expanding. And that yeast comes in the, the fact that while well, God's going to come back and deal with the Jews again. Because what he said while he was here as Jesus, I guess he just wasn't complete with his thoughts on that. He didn't say that they would be cursed now until the end of the age. That he has different plans, that he's going to use the church to get to them. And all our mission is, is to raise up Israel again, put those who call themselves Jews in there again, so that they can go through and build their third temple and that God can come back and restore them. That's our mission. They got this into their minds, that seed planted by Satan. They got that into their minds. And today, you see it to be so. So whenever Cain made his offering to God, and it was rejected, just like in Matthew 24, when, when Jesus said, one will be accepted and one will be rejected. Just like Cain made that offering and it was rejected, and, and Abel made the offering and it was accepted. What did, what did Abel offer? Well, he offered the blood of the firstborn. What is our offering? The blood of Jesus, the firstborn, the Son of God, the first fruit. Those who believe in him have eternal life. The blood of Jesus is the one and only thing that God accepts. That's it. Nothing else. And all we have to do is believe that. Have faith in that. Trust that. And our offering then is like Abel's offering. It's like Jesus offered his blood up. We remain hidden in that blood. Those who believe this understand that there is no red heifer that can make somebody cleansed and purified. There's no dispensation of time that denies the blood of Jesus Christ. Or else the gospel is a lie. You can't have it both ways. What they have done, these dispensationalism Zionists, and all of these ones on YouTube speaking to you about the rapture and all that, most every single one of them are this. That's why I highlight them. It's no different for the Catholics as they have replaced the blood of Jesus with the womb of Mary. They've replaced the blood with her. But the dispensationalism Zionists have taken that movement to the next level. For if you go to Jewish tradition, those who call themselves Jews, it is declared, or at least understood, that the sacrifice of the last red heifer is going to be done by the Messiah himself. Well, what would we call that? We would call that the Antichrist. So, if the Antichrist is about to sacrifice this red heifer, what does that mean for those of us who have the offering of Abel? We know from Paul that we're not going to remain once that happens. Because our offering is the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the offering of Abel. Our belief means that we're taken at that time. We're accepted. Our offering is good in God's eyes. But what about those who offer the red heifer to the Antichrist? Well, that's the offering of Cain. And who has put this? Who has worked to make sure that this has happened and, and this is all put in position? <laughs> of course, that church that tells you that they believe in the Lord but replace them with Israel. Because what they have allowed for is Israel to be raised again in 1948. They lobbied for it politically. They made sure that it happened. That's why whenever these ones speak, they'll do an hour-long video and talk for 50 minutes of it about Israel and the wars and the Jews and all these things. Because that's their baby. That's what they've built with their own hands. That's what they're offering to God. They've offered Israel to God, the old wineskin. That is their offering. It isn't the blood of Jesus. It's the blood that will come out of their offering, which is Israel. And what is that blood going to be shed? Of that red heifer. So what have they done? They've replaced the blood, the, the firstborn sacrifice of Jesus Christ. They've now replaced that with this red heifer sacrifice from the Antichrist. 
They've literally replaced the blood. They've replaced the offering. They have worked by their own hands to make sure that this has come into the position that we see today on March 29th or 30th, whatever day it is. They have worked and made sure that this was accomplished and set up. The last stronghold, America, the last place where the gospel could be accepted, has now fallen away. And it is made complete once that red heifer is actually sacrificed. The falling away will have been made complete. The last place where the gospel was accepted becomes the last place to fall. So when they say that the Jews are going to make the sacrifice of the red heifer and become ceremonially clean, that is what they're offering to God is because that's what they've worked to accomplish. As somebody who believes what is our offering to God, Faith, belief in Christ. That's it. It was His blood 2,000 years ago. We don't need any other blood. I didn't need to work with my hands to build something physical when God is spirit and truth. And I can believe in my heart and know Him in my mind. That's my offering. That should be your offering if you call yourself a Christian. Because that's what we are. We're children of God. We don't need to build with our hands to offer God something different. We don't need to make dispensation ones, because God himself is the one in, con in charge and control of it all. When that heifer is sacrificed, when that blood is poured out over the altar, that is the fruits of the works of their hands that have set this abomination up. That is the works of this that calls themselves a church, says that they're going to be raptured. That blood becomes their offering when that happens. That will be the abomination which causes desolation, as it is the replacement of the blood of Jesus in the hearts of those who claim to be for Jesus. They replace the risen third temple, Jesus Christ, with this false third temple in their minds, with the Antichrist. And all of that has been done because they have worked it with their own hands to make sure it is done. So they're going to receive the same curse that has already fall, fallen upon those who call themselves Jews. They're going to receive the same curse of Cain once that blood is spilled. And they're going to be right about everything they say that the end times has come and the tribulations has come. They're going to be right about all of that. But what they don't understand is that it's come for them because they have worked to make sure that this has taken place. The blood of that cow becomes their Lord once that happens because it is because of them that that seed grew into the fruit that will be harvested. It's because they made it happen. They put it in position. They could have done anything they wanted with the gospel. The power of the Lord would have given them all things that they desired on this earth. But what they desired was to build the way back to God themselves by putting a people who call themselves Jews back in the land of Israel so that the Lord is tarried for a long while. We're getting, we're getting upset about this. Let's build it, build it back for him. Let's give him his kingdom. That's what they have allowed to be set up and made sure that it has happened. The blood of that heifer becomes their offering to God rather than believing on the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why it's so important to be able to recognize this, that once that happens, the end has come. And you go from a transitional period, like Jesus was saying, all of these signs will, will appear before my coming. You have earthquakes in diverse places, you have pestilence, um, you know, all these different things happen. That's when you know you really need to get your radar up and look because that's the season. But when you see standing the abomination which causes desolation, that's when you know that we've gone from a transition from one thing to the next. That's when we've gone from knowing the season to understanding that no more is the Lord tarry. That is the end. And that's what happens when they sacrifice this red heifer. And I very well believe that that could happen on April 8th, and that might be why you see why a lot of people are seeing all these connections to April 8th. 
And it's very important that these were sent there from Texas because it shows the connection between that which calls themselves a church here and the works that their own hands have constructed over there in Israel. It shows the connection that that is what has allowed this to happen. That is the fruit that they are offering to God. The blood of a cow rather than the blood of the Lord. And I just want to, I was, I was inspired to write this parable yesterday. And I'm just going to read it to you. Because it perfectly illustrates what I'm trying to say of this. Imagine being a person who is prepared to go to a party, who receives the wrong directions and instead goes into a funeral service, being there knowing nothing of the person who is about to be buried, but being asked by the family to prepare and deliver a eulogy. They pull you aside and say, here, take notes, and write your own piece for he which is being buried, and deliver it to the crowd. So the man gets up in front of everyone and delivers the eulogy. The family, having heard of it, begin whispering to each other. He gave that eulogy as though he never even knew the man. There was no heart in it. Where was There was no mourning or sadness. Who is this guy? And this is what it is like for this generation who each has gone their own way. They come dressed for a party rather than for a funeral. When one is to be dressed in sackcloth, they instead show up as a harlot. What to compare this generation with? There are two offerings presented to the Lord. One offering, when it is prepared, says, This is to God. Look what we have done. By iniquity, we have raised up a people who claim to be yours, put them in a land they claim is theirs, and have put them in the position to make a sacrifice to you, so that by the ashes one can be cleansed of their own hands. Look at what we have done for you, Lord. We brought you back. And everyone else who came from their family line made the same kind of offerings, just not with the same names and objects. Well, the other offering is this. I have done nothing for you, Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. Look at what we have done in this world, Lord. Look at what we have allowed and made happen. Forgive me, Lord, a sinner. One will be dressed and prepared for the wedding, while the other will be thrown out into the darkness. The queen who sits on her throne saying, I will never mourn, is why the end comes. She is able to point and say, look over there or look here but never able to at all see into a mirror and look at her own reflection. Thus in these days there are ten virgins, and all of the virgins are aware they must be prepared to trim and light their lamps. But five of them have no idea what that actually means, because they have trusted on each other to understand the instructions on how to light them, having lost the instructions that came with the lamp. While the other five did not trust and rely on each other, but on the one who wrote the instructions, holding closely to their heart the instructions so that they do not lose them. They see the other five and say, you're all going about this the wrong way. You need to find the instructions else you'll never be able to get that lamp lit before it gets dark. But the other five do not heed the warning, always believing, I will figure this out for myself by my own hands. And it isn't until the darkness comes that they become aware that everything they were doing was for nothing as they fiddled with that lamp for all that time, but still when they needed it, couldn't get it lit. And that is what I see. That is the importance of this time that we're watching right now. It's not the sacrifice itself. It means nothing in the eyes of the Lord. He rejects it. He doesn't care about the blood of a heifer. The only offering that he accepts is the blood of Jesus Christ. But what it shows is that Iniquity from this fallen apostate church has risen up the very judgment that they're declaring is going on other people without being able to see the whole time that it was they who replaced the blood of Christ in their heart with something other than God. Their offering is iniquity. Their works are stained. And judgment is coming for them who have done and believed and followed this. Because God has put a supernatural hardness over their heart so that they cannot even see their own hypocrisy. They cannot even see their own mind as double. You can tell them they don't see it. You'll just become a, a blasphemer or you don't understand the word of God or whatever they attack you with or they'll shut you up. They literally cannot see what they do because God has hardened them to see it. Because judgment remains on them because they have rejected the blood of Christ. And now they have built up the land and built up a people to replace the blood of Christ with the blood of a heifer and of a physical temple. 
And they're working their way back to God with their own hands, just like they raised in the Tower of Babel. They've built the golden calf and worshipped it. And that is why judgment is coming to them and to all who have followed down this path. Because what this means is that God has allowed all of this to happen for just such this time. He has allowed it to happen. Because that's what they've desired. They don't want Christ anymore. They want the Antichrist. So he's allowed them to build all of these things, work in order to accomplish all of these things that they think is holy. They're filled with pride. Such a haughty spirit that I can't even listen to them speak anymore. And that always comes before the fall. So my friends, be very, very cautious of what you're listening to. Don't just listen to the sweet words that they're telling you, but, but listen about what they're actually saying, the, the meat that they're actually giving you. If anybody is saying that this blood of the red heifers is going to be accepted by God and that God's going to come back and save the Jews because of that blood and because of that sacrifice, he's going to accept that offering. If any of them tells you this, and in any way, Run, flee from that house because that house has been marked for destruction. They are under the judgment of God. And anything else that they say doesn't matter because in their hearts they've replaced the Lord with the works of their own hands. God bless.